Okay, so let's take a look at uh, these three problems. So let's take a look at this first one. So we're trying to uh, we're trying to add five eighths and five fourteenths. So we need to find a common denominator. So what I what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to list multiples of fourteen. Uh, so skip counting by fourteens. I get down here. I get fourteen, and I get twenty eight and forty two and fifty six. And as I'm writing those numbers, I'm asking myself, does eight go into those? Does eight go into those? Eight goes into fifty six. So fifty six is the lowest common denominator or the least common and then when i make the denominators 56 i have to change the numerator so i multiplied uh 14 by 4 and i multiplied um 8 um by 7 so 7 times 5 is 35 and 4 times 5 is 20. so that gives me 55 56. All right, number 22, name two numbers whose GCF is 60. So greatest common factor. Factors are smaller because they divide into the number. And the least common multiple of the two numbers is 600. So multiples are greater. So, so somewhere my number is between 60 and 600, which I know is not a great help. But I'm going to list multiples of 60 because that's a factor of these. And in doing so, I, get, I did 60, 120, 180, 240, 300. And right away, I see two numbers that are, that are, are uh, factors, obviously, of their, their 60 is a factor of them, and that they, are, they could divide into 600. So those two numbers are 300, because 300 goes into 600 twice, and 120. So 120 would go in five times. Five times 20 is 100. And 5 times 1 is 500. 500 plus 100, 600. So that's how that would do. Uh, so Ashley bought a 12-pack of juice for $3.84. How much does each one juice box cost? That's simple d division. Make sure you're keeping track of the decimal. Just bring that up into the problem. And each one is $0.32. Cents. And you can see my work there. 12 goes into 38 three times, which gives me 36 subtract. And I get 30, I get 2, bring down my 4, 12 goes into 24 twice. Works out very nicely. All right. Let's take a look at 24. So a map uses 8 centimeters to represent 28 miles. What we need to find out is what, how many centimeters are represent 1 mile. So it sounds odd, but we're going to actually divide 8, 28 into 8. And so that gives us a really small number of 0.28 five seven dot it goes on for a while we're going to take that answer and we're going to multiply that by 70 because that would then tell us how many uh, miles are represented by um, or how many centimeters are represented by 70 miles so that answer then comes out to an even nice even 20. i would do that one on your calculator number 25 sam reads 60 pages of his novel in a hundred minutes okay hundred minutes so how many how many pages of his novel can Sam read in 45 minutes? So again, we need to take 60 pages and we're going to divide that by 100. So that gives me 0.6 pages per minute. And then I'm going to multiply that by that 0 0.6 times 45, which will give me 27. So in 45 minutes, he's going to read 27 pages. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, so Ashley, she's biked 32 miles in two hours. That means that if we divide 32 by two, that she's going 16 miles per hour. And Mike, he bikes 12 miles an hour. So that means he's got 12 miles per hour. And we're going to multiply each of those by five. So Ashley biked 80 miles in five hours. Not bad. And uh, Mike bikes 60 miles in five hours. And that's a difference of 20. So how much farther can Ashley bike than Mike? It's 20 miles. Okay. So which one of the kids is correct? So if we set this up is we have our 4 to 6 ratio, and we're going to set that equal to 8 over an unknown. And then if we cross multiply like we did when we found shadow heights, we get 4x is equal to 48. And we divide both sides by 4, and we get x is equal to 12. A simple way to do it is if we're taking this here, 4 inches, and we're increasing, increasing that to 8, we multiplied that by 2. And so to keep the picture the same ratio, 
we would need to multiply the 6 inches times 2, and that gives us 12 inches. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, so as we look at number 29, there's a couple different answers. And really the key lies in that one-fourth, that the width of the American flag has to be one-fourth of a standard pole. So if you stick with the 20, then the width of the flag has to be 5. And if you stick with 5, then that would mean that that ratio is, is uh, twice, the width is twice that 10 to 19 ratio. So then you can also figure out the width there. If you go to a different height, say 24, then the width of the flag has to be 1 fourth of 24, and it has to be 6. So this one doesn't have one answer. It really just has, has, has some multiple answers. So, all right. The next one is simply just to multiply, multiply and then really it's, it's really checking, do you, can you put the decimal in the right place? We have three numbers, one, two there, and a third one there behind the decimal. This is what our, our multiplication looks like when we multiply, and so we get 0.224. All right. Okay, so if we look at that first problem here of 3 and 1 half divided by 1 third, remember when we're dividing with fractions, we need to use that key change flip. So let's keep uh, the 3 and 1 half, but let's change that to a improper fraction. So that becomes 7 halves divided by one-third. So keep that seven halves, change this, the division to multiplication, and then flip the uh, one-third to three over one. That gives me 21 halves, and that's that then becomes 10 and one-half. So really what that's saying is how many one-thirds are in three and one-half, okay? And so we know that it's three per whole number, so that would be at least nine. And then we've got a little bit left over. So we've got another half. Okay. Everest is so tall and Mount um, Hugens is so tall. And so really it's just to figure out the difference, it's dividing the 8.8 .8, um, kilometers by 5.5 and you get 1.6. Nice that it comes out evenly. So it's 1.6 times greater. Okay, and then this one, you can solve this one kind of almost probably in your head because you can say, well, 5, 6 is almost a full cup. Uh, so you're going to need uh, three of those to get to the, to, to the three cups of cashews that you need, but you're going to be short, so you're going to have to buy another one. But the problem there is you're not certain, is, is that enough? So if you actually do the math, 3 and 1 third divided by 5, 6, again using our keep change flip method, that comes out to, we change that to 10 thirds, and we're going to multiply that by 6 over 5. Now, this does a lot of cross out, which is what I already did here. So, um, 3 is a factor of 6, so 3 goes into 3 once, and it goes into 6 twice. And 5 is a factor of 10, so we're going to cross that out and make 5 a 1. And that's great, because now our denominator is 1, and then the 10 a 2. So now we have 2 times 2, and that gives us 4. So we need 4 jars, which is kind of what we were thinking we needed, but now we're certain of that. We don't need a fifth jar, and it's going to come out evenly. We're just going to be able to open up all our all of our jars, dump all four into whatever we're making or wanting to eat, and we have it done. All right, so 4 jars. All right, let's take a look at the 34. So 34... The numbers are correct, 1, 8, 6, 2, the numbers are all correct, but we see right away that there are two numbers behind the decimal point, so there should be two numbers behind the decimal point in the answer, and there's not. And so the correct answer is 18.62. Now, with this next one, number 35, I think a number line works well, 2 and a half divided by halves, so what that's really saying is how many halves are in two and a half. And so if we look at that, we can see here there's one half, two, three, four, five. Sorry about my drawing isn't, isn't perfect. But really that counts the number of halves. And we can also divide that out and see all that in play too. But there are five. So there's my model. And then when we look at number 36, so really what 15 out of 20 is 15 divided by 20, 
which is 0.75, so that's their score, or that is equal to a 75%, because we multiply that by 100. But if you're looking at 20, if we were to increase this fraction to 100, we would multiply 20 by 5 and 15 by 5, and we'd get 75 hundredths, which that's what we have there, 75 hundredths. And we also have that here with 75%. Okay. With problem 37, there's a couple different ways that you could come at this. So you have to find 25% off the original price. The original price, of course, is that 123.75. So you can multiply the 123.75 times 0.25, which is 25%, and that would tell you the discount. Then you would need to take that price and subtract it from 123.75, and you would have the sale price. So really what you're going to be paying for the item is you're going to be paying 75% for the item because it's 25% off. So if you're paying 75%, there's an easier way to do this problem, is take the 123.75 and multiply it by 75, and then that will give you the sale price. All in one step. No subtracting, no going back and having to do that. So if I do that, if I multiply... Um, 123.75 times 0.75, or 75%, that gives me 92.8125. So between friends, let's call that $92.81. All right, that is that problem. All right, let's take a look at number 38. So you went to the mall with $80 and you spent 52. What percent was not spent? So we I underline that because it's not asking what was spent. It's what was not spent. So I put 52 over 80, did a quick div division. That gave me 65% of the money was spent. So now 100 minus 65, and that gives me 35% was not spent. So they still have they they still have 35% of their money. All right, number 39. Um, so you've got $20 before tax is added, and it says that the Minnesota tax rate is six. 0.5%. So remember that 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 really looks like 0 0.065 as a decimal. Uh, and then uh, what will be the total cost of the item, including the sales tax? So what I've encouraged you to do is to do this in one step instead of doing it in multiple steps is to think of, well, one is 100% because that, that will represent the $20 that she's spending. And then 0 0.065, that's the sales tax. So if we multiply 20 by uh, 1.065, that will give us the total. And if we kind of think about that, 10% of 20 is $2. So we know that, that the sales tax should be less than $2. And that gives us a ballpark. It's almost half, but not quite. So it, it's should somewhere between $1 and $2, and it's closer to $1. So when we actually do that multiplication, we see that the answer is $21.30. So there's her total. Last problem. Brandon's ice cream cone contains 16 grams of saturated fat. Uh, and that's 80% of his total daily allowance. So what is Brayden's total daily allowance? So what I did was I said, okay, 80, 80 over, that should be 100, 80 over 100 is equal to four-fifths. So right now they've had four-fifths of their daily allowance. Okay, so that four-fifths, we can really take a look at illustrating that like this. Here's one, two, three, four. So they've had four of the five. And all of these are in increments of four. And so that last fifth, this is one fifth, is going to be another four. So how much, um, how much fat, saturated fat in grams is Braden allowed? Well, Braden is allowed uh, 20 grams. So uh, that, that should bring out the end of this. And I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you're watching this, and I hope that you got most of these correct, or all of them correct. All right, thank you.